Hello everyone, my name is Najib. I am from Bridge Plus, a co-working space powered by Capital Land. Thank you for joining us for our very first health and wellness webinar series where we will be inviting health and wellness professionals and educators to share their knowledge and experience to help you guys take better charge of your health. So for today's session, we have Dr. Tim Arrington, owner and founder of Total Health Chiropractic, to give us a talk about today's topic, which is correct, correct computer posture and desk exercises. So without further ado, uh, Dr. Tim, the stage is yours. And thank you very much. It's a lovely uh, introduction. Um, I'm just go, gonna go ahead and share my screen. So just bear with me for just a few seconds. And and there we are. Okay, what I'd like to do today is um, talk to you about health and wellness. But what I wanna do today specifically is um, I'm going to do as much good as I can. This is what I want to do. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to, to tell you a few things about myself. Um, <clears throat> I'm a doctor of chiropractic. I came to Singapore 10 years ago. Um, I founded a company, Total Health Chiropractic, because I realized how important posture was and, and how it is affecting people's health. I very quickly got to work authoring and write, writing the book Posture Matters. Uh, and after then, I've been a, a public speaker. I've been on most of the stages in Singapore in most of the corporations. Uh, because what we do is very necessary in this world, we now have got 10 doctors, we have five clinics. And a couple of years ago, Capital Land asked us to partner with them. And we now have a fabulous space in Capital Tower. Um, we currently see over 1,200 people every single week and this is because what we do is absolutely fa fundamentally important for people's health. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to ask a few questions, um, very simple little questions. And it, it's, in the, it's, it's a, a poll. So there's going to be three questions go, going to go up there. What I'd like you to do is just, just, just answer them because it's going to give me some feedback. Uh, then I can be more specific. To, to you uh, and I, I can do more good. Okay, so as we go through this, there is a, uh, there's a Q and A box. So please go ahead and ask any questions you want. I'm gonna address these at the end. Okay, so anything I say doesn't sound right or if I trigger some questions in your mind, then please go ahead and uh, let, let's address these at the end. Okay, so what I want to do today is, first of all, I'm going to talk about the big picture. What, you know, what's going on in the world? Um, we are very much in a new reality where we are working from home. And this gives me many, many concerns because, because of, we're doctors of wellness. And today, I just want to, we're going to focus on a couple of things that are, are solutions for yourself. So we're going to talk about ergonomics. And we're going to talk about some basic exercises that um, that you can start applying on a daily basis that will help you enormously. Okay, I like to think of this as the art and science of working from home. Okay, these are going to be simple strategies that you can apply from now on that's going to help you. Okay, so let's look at this new norm that people are talking about. Um, it's not my favourite um, way of looking at it, but. It certainly is a new normal uh, in, in certain ways. So we're coming out of lockdown at the moment, but if we look around the world, one lockdown may be not enough. This is a very interconnected world and there are viral reservoirs around the world. So it, it may raise its ugly head uh, a few more times in Singapore as well. So I think that we, we need to adopt a new mindset because I think that we, it's highly likely that many of us are going to be working at home on a more protracted basis. Okay, so what we wanna do is I want to teach you some things that you simply must know. So first of all, I'm assuming that most of you are working at a computer. So I'm gonna see the stats later on, but I'm assuming that most of you are. So if you're spending much of your time sitting like this with poor posture, then that is damaging your health every day. So right now I'm gonna introduce you to what I want you to consider as a, a reset or your new default position. So quite simply, if you're normally slouched at your computer, I want you to think about lifting yourselves up. So in the middle of your chest here, you have a, 
a sternum or breastbone. So lift it up, pull your head back onto your shoulder where it should be and open and relax your shoulders. Okay. Now you should have a slight curve to your low back. You should have more space in your chest to take deep breaths. And now you can just go ahead, engage your abs. And now that is your new default position. I want you to set some kind of reminder so you go back to that position a couple of times an hour, okay? Or any time your body's telling you with an ache or a, a twinge or, a, or any pain, okay? Keep going back to that default and move. I've written and move more. It's no good sitting there without moving all day, every day. Then your body's going to go through something called deconditioning. It's basically shutting down, all right? We need to stay on the move, okay? So we're going to be talking a lot about ergonomics, um, which is the human factor in design. Um, we can call it the science of fitting the workplace to the worker, but I'm also going to teach you how to fit yourselves to, to the workplace, okay? Um, and I, I mentioned it before, this is what I, I describe as a self-preservation strategy. So health is what we do, health is what we want. If you want to be healthy, you have to employ a wellness lifestyle in this world, okay? Now, you, there is no option, all right? If you just expect to be healthy in the future and you don't have any strategies, then almost certainly the statistics say you're gonna lose your health, okay? So what do you want from your health, which is your greatest wealth? It is your greatest wealth. And some, sometimes people don't realize that until they lose their health and then they'll spend almost anything to try and regain that lost health. I think that we want a long life, I hope. We want to avoid disease and degeneration. We want to be energetic and vital our whole life, not just while we're young. We want to be happy, we want to be comfortable in our own bodies. Too many people that I meet, and it's a crying shame, are not comfortable in the only body they have for their lives, okay? We want to be, have a, a, as much as possible a, a, a pain-free life. Now, I've been in most of the corporations and government departments and towers in Singapore, and these are the top signs and symptoms that people tell me they have. This, you can consider this the top 10. So aches and pains and muscle stiffness and swelling, numbness and tingling maybe in the fingers, headaches, migraines, weakness and fatigue. Th these will be the top 10. Now, I'm assuming that most of you are working at a computer, so I'm gonna be focusing more on um, neck pain and shoulder stiffness, um, low back pain and headaches, which probably might apply to you more. So if you've gone ahead and filled in the, the poll, I'd really like to see the, some of the answers, the results of the poll. There we go. All right, just let's just have a look at these. Do you feel that your workstation is correct? Well, 70% say no. So, so you're in the right place. I'm gonna show you today, please make notes. If any of you have any questions after, please engage me, okay? We are here for you. We are partners with your organizations. I'm only here to serve, okay? Oh, look at that. 100% of you sit more than five hours a day. 100%. So statistically, we know the physiology that if you spend five or more hours a day sitting at your computer, if you're not doing strategies to neutralize the damage, then you are causing irreparable damage to your spine and your future health. Okay. So I now know I'm definitely in the right place. Um, how many people are experiencing headaches, neck, back, shoulder pain? Again, that's 71% of you. So that's really interesting. 71% of you say that you're not ergonomically correct in your setup. And 71% of you say that you're getting pain. I think there's some correlation there. What do you think? So I'm, I'm in the right place. Let's, let's, um, let's do some good here. Let's move on. Any questions, do engage me at the end. So. I talk a lot about mindset because mindset is the answer to almost everything. It creates actions and actions will create the results. We want good results. So it starts with the right mindset. 
okay? So we've got to think about our default actions. If you're feeling some aches and pains, what do you do? I mean, do you, just, do you reach for the pill bottle and take some anti-inflammatories? Or do you listen to your body and what it's telling you? Because that's what it's doing. The body is always communicating you in ways, signs and symptoms. That's what it's trying to do. We have an efficient shape. And if we live our life in that shape with the correct alignment, we're going to have a good life. Simple as that. What we do repetitively all day, every day matters enormously as well. We are designed to move. And if you're sitting all day, every day, and you're not moving enough, then your body's going to start shutting down and you're going to decondition. Okay. Then the, your future is not, simply not going to be as good as it can be. So today we want to encourage you to make life more natural. Okay. Our physiology, we know how the body works. We have physiology. It requires certain things and it requires alignment and movement. We've got to get that into our lives. So I think you'll agree that most of us, we, we entrust our health to the medical profession. But I, I believe that that's not enough because most people don't go to the medical doctor until they have a symptom or disease because the medicine is there for sick care. They're not so good at prevention. Okay, that's up to you. And that's up to me to help you. So that's why I became a chiropractor, because when I realized what chiropractic was all about, it's not about treating disease and symptoms. I didn't want to be giving pills out every day to everybody I met. I want to help people with their lives. And chiropractic, what I do, is about life and what makes people live. It's our philosophy that we put so much health into our bodies that there's no room for disease. And when you have a, a world situation like we do now, with COVID going around, it's a virus. A virus, it, it attacks a host, but it doesn't attack all hosts, only hosts that are vulnerable or weak, or they become immune compromised because they have not engaged in a wellness lifestyle. Okay, I want to help you with a passion to be clear about how to live that wellness lifestyle. So I talk about structure a lot. I'm a chiropractor. So let's have a look at this woman in the middle there, this lady. I think, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think she looks very comfortable in her body. And she's standing there and she doesn't seem to have any, any tension. She looks relaxed to me. Why is that? Well, if you, look at the, if you look at the illustration on the left, you see a skeleton with a line going right down the middle. Now we call that line the gravity line. And we're meant to live our lives close to that gravity line. It, line. it runs right down the middle of us. If we move away from that gravity line, so we twist our spine or maybe our head comes forward, then gravitational forces are gonna start building up and you're gonna start getting tightness and pain. Now, I talk about structure a lot. Now, if you look at that chimney on the right, let's talk about that for just one moment. That, believe it or not, is a chimney that I built in Africa many, many years ago during my previous life when I was, I was involved in engineering. Now, I became an expert in building columns, and I built that one very straight. It's very tall. It's still standing today. Why is it still standing? Because the laws of the universe I adhere to very, very correctly. Now, I'm really good at columns and making columns last. Please understand and please have this awareness that we are all columns, you are columns, and you want to stand in gravity for the best part of 100 years as well. And if you want to do that without suffering, without pain, without ultimately collapsing, postural collapse is a thing then you need to be straight. You have to have good posture and good alignment, okay? Problem is everywhere I go, and when I came to Singapore, I knew I was in the right place. I see poor posture everywhere. So what is poor posture? Well, it's poor alignment. Your alignment of your body determines the alignment of your spine. That's gonna determine function. So poor structure is gonna end up with poor function. So what is poor posture? Where does it come from? Well. It comes from the habitual positioning 
which causes stress and strain on the body. So where does that stress and strain come from? Yeah, gravity. Gravitational forces align our body. They make us strong, give us strong muscles and bones, or they gradually destroy our joints. That's where the arthritis comes from. So your alignment in the future, your posture and alignment in the future will be the cause of most of your future physical pain. Please understand that. There's so much you can do to, um, to reduce that. And yes, if you have poor posture, it will cause premature aging. If you look at that little diagram that I put on there, you see the little guy on the left there sitting at his computer. It looks like he already has back pain, low back pain. You can see the red. Well, the reality is if they, he sits in that position all day, every day, after 10 years or 20, 15 years or whenever it is, he's going to walk home in that position. And he's going to be, he's going to be maybe still only 45 years old, but he's going to have the body of an old man because he's going to be leaning forward and he's going to be very, very stiff. So let's understand a bit more physiology, okay? Physiology means how the body works. You see here, the brain has got to communicate through the spine. Then, and it communicates through the spinal cord, which is an extension of the brain. So yes, you have your central nervous system running right down your spine. And then you have these little branches as the nerves, they go off to all the organs and the cells, okay? Obviously, there cannot be any blockages in the flow of electrochemical energy, the nerve flow. It can't be interfered with if we want to be healthy, which means all our backbones, which are stacked on top of each other, they simply must be in alignment. They must be, because if they're not, there will be, there will be um, blockages or interference in the flow of this nerves. But there's more than that, because if you are out of alignment with bad posture, it's going to affect the efficiency of your breathing and circulation. So all the important things that give you function rely on good alignment. And it's true. Any postural distortions will always affect the transmission of your blood, or your oxygen and your nerves. OK, there's nothing more important. You've got to get this right. So I mentioned before something called deconditioning. It's something that happens when you sit for more than five hours a day or five hours a day will do it and your body's shutting down. So here we have, some, it looks like an old lady who's been suffering from the sitting disease, spinal deconditioning. We can, it's also known as postural stress disorder. Now, if you look at her, you can see that there's less space for her organs. They're being compressed in her thoracic and her abdominal cavity. This will lead to disease. She will be stiff and uncomfortable. She'll have aches and pains. She won't be able to turn her head properly. She's probably got numbness and tingling, got running down her arms, probably got some back disorders by the looks of it because the discs are being compressed at the bottom. Because of this situation, then she also has decreased blood flow to her tissues, decreased oxygen to her brain. Now this is going to have much wider results in the in the future you've got to have a well well oxygenated brain as you go through life and she will have decreased lymph flow so lymph is what cleans out the body and if you're stiff and there's less movement your body's not cleaning out so this is as a, a representation what this deconditioning looks like and on the inside it's not pretty we need to open up so again i remind you lift your sternum Open your shoulders, pull your head back into your uh, back on top of your shoulders and take a big breath. If you do that with me, you can feel how much more breath you can get into your body. If you can maintain that posture throughout your life through some simple exercises and perhaps employing a chiropractic lifestyle, it is a wellness lifestyle after all, that will change your future. So if you're feeling a bit stiff in life, then, you know, Maybe we'll have a little chat afterwards. Please engage me, I'm here to help. Why do I get so upset by all this here in Singapore? Well, here's why, right there. I take the MRT like most of you as well. 
This is what I see most days. And it worries me enormously. I also have 17 year old kids. They also spend a great deal of time on their phones and their laptops and their iPads and God knows what. But of course, they're my children. So I make them do certain exercises. I make sure that they're not succumbing to this postural changes that will, that will hasten their, their aging. Got to take this seriously. Now, a little bit more physiology, which I find really interesting, and I hope you will. Have you, any of you noticed that it's, it's quite hard to have a tight, sorry, it's quite easy to have a tight low back or tight shoulders? Now, why is that? Well, it's because we're leaning forward. So then these muscles have to fire, and they are firing to keep us standing in gravity. You lean one way, gravity is going to pull you, the muscles have to pull back. Now, a little bit of physiology. If I bend my arms with our, my enormous bicep here, what's happening is that my bicep is moving the bone. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't work unless the tricep was turned off to allow the movement. Now, this is called reciprocal inhibition, and it's how the body works. When one bone moves, one muscle moves a bone, another muscle is turned off to allow the movement. It's a reflex, you can't do anything about it, it's just there. Now this creates a problem in our lives because many of you have already told me you have tight shoulders or tight back, tight low back, which means you have a corresponding weakness at the front. So if anybody ever gets sh shoulder problems, it's probably because your muscles at the back are tight and the ones at the front are consequentially weak. Maybe some of you find it hard to get a six pack. There's mine, right? Now, what does that, where did that six pack come from? It came from the fact I look after my back. It's not tight all the time. If it was tight all the time, my abs would be inhibited. So that explains why it's quite hard to develop this six pack. You've got to look after your back. Simple as that, okay? Now this applies to the upper cross syndrome. It applies to the upper body comes from this forward head and low and lo, lower cross syndrome which causes the weakness in the abs tightness in the back is due to slouching which does a lot of damage to the discs okay so we now a little bit know a lot more about the problem let's talk about a few solutions shall we what can we do you've got to simply have strategies for prevention prevention is always 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 better than cure so how do we do this well we we apply ourselves we take an interest how do we prevent injury and pain we change our personal behavior and we change our environment so how do we do that well let's think about our behavior if you're sitting all day without moving uh -uh, that's a problem right there you need to stand up twice an hour and it only has to be for 30 or 60 seconds. You could just stand up, get some water, come back, but always reset your body in that position, default. Chest up, sternum up, head back, shoulders open, okay? And move, get some movement in those discs. They rely on movement to, to, to live. Every hour, you need to be doing some very simple stretching. I'm gonna show you through a few stretches at the end, okay? Think posture, think alignment. Have reminders, I don't care how you do it. Maybe you have yellow stickies or something. Maybe something goes beep in your room every 30 sec, every maybe twice an hour, but something to remind you. I've been doing this for so long that, it, that if I actually slouch, I feel it very quickly and I automatically self-correct. So when it comes to the, the posture thing, I've sort of got it cracked. If you can have this awareness, it's gonna put you in a much better place for the future. Okay, we need to be fit. It's hard to be look after your posture if we're not fit. So we need to engage. All right. Um, I'm not, not going to say too much more about fitness, but you need to move. Okay. It's not about fitness as, as running, 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 running. It's about movement and making sure our body's working correctly. Now, I don't know about you, but when I came into lockdown, I started to get some eye strain pretty early on. I realized I wasn't following one of my own rules. And my rule is 20, 20, 20, and this is to protect my eyes. So literally every 20 minutes, try looking away. Look at something at least 20 feet away, 
and holding it for 20 seconds. Let your eyes accommodate, focus on something that's further away. If not, your, mus your muscles in your eyes, and yes, your eyes are the, the, the lenses in your eyes, they are actually, um, they're controlled by little muscles. And if you are just staring at one screen without movement, then those muscles are gonna change and you're gonna, you're gonna start to suffer uh, I, um, uh, problems with your eyesight. Okay, so what I'm talking about here is some creating some good habits and it all comes from mindset. So please think about what you're doing every day, all day, every day, right? Because these things build up. There's something called bioaccumulation. Whatever you do, whether it's good or bad, it builds up in your body. And we know what it looks like down the line. You know, people in Singapore, it has to be said, I'm afraid don't age as well as in some other countries. They have quite long lives, but they're stiff and they have, they, they have arthritis. My home is in Spain and people are more active. It's as simple as that. We have more money here in Singapore. The economy is better here in Singapore, but I think they have less um, problems with aging in Spain. Okay. So I don't really want you to become a chiropractor. You don't need to become a chiropractor, but I want you to start thinking a little bit more about like a chiropractor, because that's going to help you enormously. Okay. So let's just think about our workstation. Now, many of you will be at home right now. Uh, you, you, maybe you, you don't have the luxury of a, of a, a fancy chair or a, a desk or whatever. Um, so if that's true, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to show you in a moment how to set up your laptop. But these are, this is for the people with a, a good setup, okay? Four items of furniture to think about, chair, desk, monitor, and your keyboard and mouse. So let's just work out what we're doing here. Ideally, your chair will be adjustable. You set it to your desk height so that your, that your elbow height is literally just above the, the, um, the level of the desk. Your monitor wants to be high. It wants to be direct in front of you. Don't have it so you're twisted to see the monitor and it wants to be up so, so that your eyes are literally, I'm looking straight at the camera in my, cam, in my computer right now because it, I've got it set at eye height. Okay, that's where you wanna be. Um, your keyboard and mouse, you, you wanna be have it set so that your, your, um, your, your wrists are not up or down or twisted in any way. It wants to be neutral. Now, this chair that you see here has got armrests. I don't have armrests today, but in my office I do. And you can bring the armrests up and to the level of the desk. And that will literally take the weight of your arms. And once that takes the weight of the arms, that's taking a lot of strain from your shoulders. So think again, I want you, to, how are you gonna be? You're gonna sit back in your chair. Um, you see this chair also has a support for the, for the lumbar, for the low back. So sit back. If you sit forwards, you're losing the effects of the chair and you can slouch. But if you sit all the way back, you'll find that that lumbar support um, is doing its job. It's supporting your low back, okay? Unfortunately, I meet so many people who've got these lovely fancy chairs that cost somebody a lot of money and they don't know how to set them up. So if you have any problems with your, with, with your, your, your equipment, then let us know or engage me. I'm here to help. So that was how to set up the equipment. But let's just talk about what we're trying to achieve here. Your head wants to be upright on your shoulders. We want that sternum as high as possible. We want our back supported by the backrest. If you don't have a backrest, then bring one in. It can be anything, even a rolled up towel will do. Your wrists straight, not up and down. Your thighs, as you see in the picture, want to be 90 degrees or slightly more. Um, they, it shouldn't be less because we don't want any restriction in blood flow, okay? Um, if, if the backs of your legs are heavy on the chair because your legs are a little on the short side, then you need perhaps to bring your feet up with a support, okay? Your feet should be fully supported. They shouldn't be dangling because that puts more pressure on the backs of your legs. Down the road, varicose veins. You do not want that, all right? So I'm going to talk about a laptop in a moment. I'm going to show you how to set up, how, how, um, how I think you should set up. I'm certainly going to show you how I set things up. But the problem with laptops is that the monitor is attached to the keyboard. So we need a solution for that. It's not really very adjustable. It's compact and it's quite hard to get a proper setup. People do have different solutions. They try docking stations and stands and 
Um, I, I, I'm a big fav uh, my favorites are Bluetooth, mouse, keyboards, and monitors and things. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I set things up. So I'm just going to unshare my screen for a moment. Okay, so hopefully you can see me and hear me. What I'm gonna do is I've got my laptop here and this is my dining room table. I'm gonna set it up. So I've got a laptop, very inexpensive laptop stand. It's cost me 30 bucks. And I'm gonna put that there and I'm gonna get my Bluetooth keyboard. I've got a Bluetooth mouse. Let's go for a setup here. Okay, so how does this feel? Well, immediately I feel a bit low. Low is no good. I want to, I need to be up a bit. So I've got a cushion. Actually, I've got a towel. It, it's, it doesn't matter what, what you're using. It's bringing me up. Let's see how that feels. I don't have an armrest, so I'm going to use the table as my armrest. So I'm going to move right in. Actually, this is feeling good already. My eyes are slightly too high. I'm going to bring my tape, my laptop up, quite simply on a book. Better already. Okay, now what have I got here? I've got my eyes at pretty much at the height of the top of my laptop. I've got my Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth mouse. Um, I feel pretty good, but I don't have any support for my low back. So I've quite simply got a towel roll here. That's going in my low back. I'm sitting back. Actually, I'm in really good shape here. So I hope you saw what I did there. So Bluetooth it enables me to get the, the computer away and I've got everything is neutral. My arms are supported. My low back is supported. I can keep my sternum high and my head as far back on my shoulders and that's a good setup. Okay. Any questions on that? Please go ahead and tell me at the end. I'm just going to go ahead and Share my screen again. And we are back. So you saw from my setup there that, that, that there's nothing too complicated there. It's just, it's supporting me. It's getting me in, in a position where um, I'm going to be fresh. I'm not going to be aching, aching, aching after a short period of time. So I'm going to run through now some very, very, very simple exercises that I think you should do certainly a few times a week, if not every day. First of all, our neck is meant to have a curve. So if you've been sat there at your desk for five hours plus, which all of you, I'm assuming for many of you, it's more like eight or nine or 10, you simply got to do some of these exercises. So get a neck roll or make one. You see here, um, the skeleton's using a rolled up towel. That's perfectly fine. But what we want is the weight of the head helping re-establish re that curve in the neck, okay? That curve's really important. So you should do that most days for, you know, just for a few minutes at least. Many of you will have some tightness, stresses, rigidity even in your upper back. So here, that's me on the left, actually. Um, I'm using a roller. And what, would, what I'm doing there is I'm quite simply, after spending a few hours in flexion at a computer, I'm putting my body into extension. And so I'm balancing the damages that have been building up during the day. If you, if you spend too much time in flexion, you will become an old man or an old lady. Way too soon. Just don't let it happen. Spend some time in extension and life will be good. Okay. Um, our neck takes a lot of hammer because of the weight of our bowling ball heads. So we should be stretching out our, 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 our necks all the time. If you feel tension, move it, pull it back on the shoulders, but definitely stretch it out. Always remember there are six ranges of motion for most of, the, of these joints. With your neck, it's, we have extension, we have flexion, we have side flexion, both sides, and we have two rotations. Okay. As you go through life, working at your computer, you need to look after your range of motion. If you don't, you're going to stiffen up. You'll gradually lose your range of motion. So when you're stretching, make it a little bit uncomfortable. Just if you're always inside your comfort zone, you're not stretching enough and you will lose that range of motion. So just stretch. 
and go slightly into discomfort. Okay, look after that, that those ranges. Shoulders take a real hammer and we, gravity makes us short. So why not go ahead and just make ourselves tall, stretch out those shoulders and pull your head, pull your arms back and maybe, maybe go to the side, to the side, gives your side a nice stretch as well. These are simple things you can do during the day while you're sitting. Now this, very few people understand the importance of this. What is happening here? The lady on the right is not strangling herself. What she is doing, she's quite simply, here's mine, quite simply she's got a, a resistance band, she's popped it behind her neck and she's pulling back. She's strengthening those neck muscles. The lady on the left is using, using a towel, okay? So quite simply, Every day, if you do that just a few times and hold it for five seconds, you'll gradually wake up these muscles and your head will start to come back on your shoulders. You will let, ladies, you will become taller and more elegant. I mean, what more do you want? Okay. I believe passionately that if you're sitting all day, every day, with it, with it, you're probably not moving enough. So an exercise ball is a very, very simple solution. I think you should, we should all have one. When you, when you come home, don't head straight for the sofa, maybe pull the ball out and just do some bouncing. It's going to be good for your core strength. It's going to get movement in those discs. There's one thing that you need to know about your disc is that they do not have a blood supply. The blood goes to the region around the spine, but only movement brings in the blood, the nutrition, the oxygen, and pumps away the waste products metabolism. The number one cause of slip discs and all, all these spinal problems is lack of movement. So bouncing on that ball brings that spine back to life. It's a simple thing, okay? It's really hard to sit on a ball without moving. So try it, okay? Um, and then here we, here we have a, another exercise. It's very, very simple. Uh, I do this very often, actually. Uh, I do it, if I show you how I do it on my desk, I just, I push my chair away and I go down. And I'm holding the desk and I'm just stretching my arms open and it's opening those discs in my low back. It's a really, really good thing to do. All right now, when we're talking about the low back, I mentioned the discs. We need to get, make sure they're stretched out most days. So quite simply, lying on your back at the end of the day, um, yoga mat or whatever, pull your knees up and maybe get some movement, movement there. Maybe, maybe windscreen wiper your legs from side to side get some rotation in that low back. A great trick that I do when I'm sitting at my desk very often is I hold onto the desk and I rotate my chair. And I do that and that's putting a nice rotation in all my spinal joints. It's a very, very, very simple solution, okay? Now, just a few simple, simple golden rules that please don't forget. Um, when you stretch, don't do it too quickly, don't do it too severely. Stretch and warm up the tissues gradually, okay? If I'm gonna do my shoulder, for example, I'm not just gonna go, if I'm gonna do a rotation or, or whatever, I'm not gonna go bang, because I'm, I'm gonna hurt my shoulder. I'm gonna go gently, and then I'm gonna push it further, okay? So you hold it for five seconds, maybe at about 75% of the stretch, and then the body will release, it will accept it, and then you can go further. Always go slightly, slightly into discomfort. If you're going into pain, real pain, remember pain there to tell you to stop or something's wrong. Um, so we should be doing all these without pain. Please don't bounce. So whatever you're doing, so don't be bouncing on any of your stretches. Sometimes I go to the golf course and I see people go to the, the first tee with a, a with a, um, a golf club behind there and they're going bang, bang, bang. And I, I want to go and give them my card because I just know they're gonna put their backs out. Please don't do that. Just do it gradually and feel the stretch. Okay, feel the stretch. These are all simple solutions for you that you can start doing every day. Okay, uh, just a few simple warnings here. Um, if you do feel tingling and numbness, right, this is a nerve thing, okay? You don't want to mess around, you need to see an expert, okay? These, these are the types of things that we deal with all day, every day. It's not something that you want to hope goes away, okay? So tingling and numbness. Pain that doesn't go away, right? Pain is the body telling you something's wrong. 
So any pain that radiates down the, down the arms or legs or anything like that, that's nerve pain. Any pain that's, that's just building and not going away hardly ever, then you know, your body's telling you something's wrong. You know, we probably need to take an x-ray and, and take a look at it. Okay? If you're experiencing any, any loss of strength or co coordination, anything like that, again, you need to get that checked. Headaches. So many people are living with headaches when they don't have to. Most of the headaches are cervicogenic. They come from the neck. So if you, if you have headaches, then they're so easy. Most of them are so easy to get rid of if you know what you're doing. Okay, so these, again, that would be probably a sign that uh, um, maybe you should pop in and see us or somebody else. Uh, and if you're noticing any structural changes, so what would that mean? So if you're posture, if you're aware that your head's coming forward or you're getting swelling on the back of your neck, or maybe one muscle on one side of your body is becoming much bigger than the other side, almost certainly there's some kind of muscle imbalance and it's, it's, it's time to get checked out properly. Okay, so hopefully I've given, well, I've given you a lot of information. I hope it's been useful. Please ask as many questions as you want. Um, I'm gonna move to this slide here. What we've got here, because we are in Capital Tower, because we partner with Capital Land, you guys are in the best place, okay? So it doesn't matter if you're in any Capital Land building, then please take um, note that we have a QR code here. This enables you to come into our clinics for only $30 and for that first visit. Normally it's about 170 for you guys because we are partnering with you you can get checked out properly. So if you have any pain that doesn't go away or, or you're worried about, or any family members or even, please bring them in uh, and get checked. We, we are here to help. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pass the slides back and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, stick, gonna stick around, I'm gonna ask all the questions I can. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Tim. I found that session extremely useful and informative. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about correct computer posture and simple desk exercises. So I see that we have some questions from the attendees, so perhaps I can address the questions and get Dr. Tim to answer them. First question we, first question we have is, what if I'm using a standing desk? Is that good ergonomic? Do you recommend a standing desk? So, Dr. Tim? I think having a standing desk is a wonderful thing. Um, it's something because remember, we want we want you to, to be to be moving more. It is possible to stand in bad posture, so be aware of that. But I think if you can, if you if having a standing desk is one of your options. So usually these standing desks they go up and down. So maybe you could spend an hour with, with uh, an hour on your feet or or just up and down. I personally, uh, we have standing desks in, 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 in nearly all our clinics. Um, I, I personally use it a lot. Some of my doctors use it all the time. Um, it's definitely a good solution, um, but remember, always remember, um, it is possible to, start to stand in bad posture, so you've always got to be thinking about your posture. Um, not everybody has the, the luxury of a standing desk. Um, in my, in my home where I am now, I don't have a standing desk, but I've sort of created one. I have a cabinet over there, which is about the right height. Sometimes I go and stand there. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not a 100% solution in itself. Remember, it's about mindset. So all the time, even when you're standing, you've got to think about your sternum. You've got to keep it up because if you're slouching, your sternum is dropping. Again, it's putting a lot of pressure on your, on your spine and on your discs. Um, but I, I, I think if you can, if you have the luxury of standing desk in your office or, or perhaps you've got space at home, then I think it's a great solution. And if anybody wants uh, an introduction to anybody that, uh, to get a discount, then we have people that we work with uh, that, that we can afford you some discounts. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Tim. I hope that has addressed your question regarding whether you should use a standing desk and whether it is good ergonomics to have a standing desk. Okay, next question we have is, uh, why do I feel so much more comfortable crossing my legs when sitting down? So that's a rather interesting question. So, crossing your legs? Yeah. Yes, why do I feel so much more comfortable crossing my legs when sitting down? 
Um, right. <laughs> so, but, but I think most people feel quite comfortable when they cross their legs. I cross my legs quite often. The thing to do is, is remember not to cross the same one all the time. Um, <clears throat> if you do, it's going to put it, it's gradually going to twist the pelvis. So it's not something you want to do. So I, it's something I'm aware of. I, I tend to cross my right habitually. So I, I, I consciously will, will, will go ahead and cross my left a little bit. Um, I don't think it's such a bad thing. I don't think you should be having sitting all day with your legs crossed. It's putting pressure on, on the, on the tissues and it, do, it does affect the, um, the passage of, of blood around, around the arteries and the veins around your system. So it's not something that you want to do all the time, uh, but it's, it's one of these, it's one of these positions that is quite comfortable. I agree. Um, and I only, I only have a problem with it if you do it habitually all the time with one leg. All right. So that's my answer. Um, move across opposite legs, but please don't do it all the time. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. And uh, okay, this is a question. And then the question is, and something I'm guilty of actually, is I actually, uh, okay, sorry, give me a second. Yeah, what's the question? Yes, I crack my own neck. Is that okay? So like I said, I something I'm guilty of. I crack my neck back a lot. So uh, Dr. Tim, so uh, what do you think about cracking your neck or any other parts of your body? Well, um, I understand why we feel the need to crack our own joints. Because when a joint cracks, there is a phys there's physiology happens in the joints. And what happens is that muscles suddenly release. There's a release of the, cr the noise is actually gas coming out of the fluid. Um, muscles release, um, that cr they creates more space that allows more blood and oxygen into the joint. So there is a relaxation. But here's where the problem is. If you've got, if you've got a spine or a neck, say that's got six or seven joints, one of the joints is bad you're getting the feeling you need to crack that joint. So you, you do whatever you do to crack it. The problem is you just cracked the wrong joint because the bad joint has got fibrosis and scar tissue building around it. And what you did is you just cracked the good joints beside it. But again, you, feel, you felt better because there is a physiology. It releases some of the, the tissues in that area. So you do feel better. And also there is a little bit of endorphin release when, when, when you get this, this reflex action around the spine. But the problem is you are making good joints hypermobile and you're allowing the bad joints to move less and less. So if you're doing it habitually, it is bad, bad, bad. And if you could do it successfully, then I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have a job. But we, as I said, we have 1,200 people that come in because they can't crack the right joints. We, ne we need to isolate the bad joints and make sure that we restore the function of the bad joints. And to do that, we find the joints that aren't moving well. And they're the ones that have got fibrosis and scar tissue building around them. They're the ones we need to move. So be very careful. We all crack our own joints sometimes because we stretch and as you stretch sometimes there's, there's a release and that release is okay so you can stretch and release and, and get a release or a crack that's that's fine but if you are looking for a specific crack don't, please don't do it because in the long run um, the results won't be very beneficial at all hope that helps okay well i will certainly heed your advice and actually not continue cracking my any parts of my body so yeah so I hope you guys <clears throat> okay so we have another question uh, we actually have a few questions so that uh, okay. Let us, okay so how can we correct posture any suggestions and does yoga practice actually help with posture and flexibility um well i get i i get asked this all the time so i have just i say just a couple of hours ago i did my daily yoga session I do about 20 minutes every day. Uh, I've been doing it since the, the lockdown started. So we've done over a hundred days now. And I've, as far as flexibility, I've never felt better. People ask me, 
should I do yoga or should I do Pilates? Well, my answer is always the same. Find an instructor who inspires you. And I don't, that might be someone, a live person in a gym or a, or a studio, or it might be, it might be on YouTube. I don't care. But really find somebody that inspires you. It, you've got to have strategies that make you follow through. Okay. So can you use yoga to correct your posture? Uh, yes and no. It's certainly going to be good for your core strength and flexibility, but there are certain, uh, I, I showed you certain uh, exercises, for example, strengthening the neck muscles that yoga tends not to do. So you need to have this understanding that you need to do certain postural exercises. Uh, and then of course, yoga or Pilates or uh, anything that involves movement and balance is, is always going to be good. Okay, hope that helps. Um, I can see that somebody's asking about discs here. And so can we help with slip discs? So a huge amount of people that come into our clinics have disc concerns. How do we know that? Well, when we take x-rays, we see the disc spaces becoming thinner, which tells us there is degenerative joint disease happening. So there is a disc problem building and discs actually don't slip anywhere. It's a bit of a misnomer. What they do is the, they degenerate and they lose their fluid, internal fluid pressure that holds the spine up. So they, they sort of tend to dry up and they start to collapse and get thinner and thinner. As they do that, they tend to herniate and prolapse. That's when they start to press on nerves and things and, and then you have a terrible problem. So what we have to do is go to the cause of the problem, which is always poor alignment, poor movement. So when we re-establish the correct alignment and correct movement, then that re-establishes the blood flow, creates more space for the nerves, obviously, and the, the tissues will start to, to regenerate to an extent that they can. So can slip discs be, be cured? Um, you can take a very degenerated disc and you can re-establish the function so that it's working really well. It's probably not going to become like a like a, a teenager's disc ever again, but you can get bad discs and you can restore their function so that so that they will then last you the rest of your life. If you if you, as long as you look after them, you need to have the mindset of 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 self-preservation. But yes, bad discs need a strategy. Otherwise, I'm afraid if they did degenerate, they did slip for a reason and you've got to do you've got to introduce other things into your life that will start to make them regenerate and this is what we teach our people okay and we have one last question so yes. um regarding okay. a personal childhood injury so the question okay. is i have a bad left knee due to a childhood injury resulting to soreness when I sit for too long. Is there anything else I can do to strengthen the muscle around the knee? So, yeah. Yeah, okay, so um, I don't really have enough history there, but when there are knee problems, there is nearly always some inhibition of the muscles around the knee. So nearly everybody with a knee problem has got weak thighs, so the quads, so, that one, one of the things you simply must do is, is, is strengthen the quads. You've also got to make sure that your knees are in alignment. So it's no good having a pelvic misalignment or a tilt or a pelvic rotation. It's no good having flat feet so your feet are rolling in because that will put your knees out of alignment as well. These are all things that we need to look at. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could tell you a little story about I, did, I managed to destroy one of my knees playing rugby many years ago, I had, I had to have an operation. I thought I'd never walk again when I, when I saw it after the operation. But I straightened out the knee, I, I straightened out the alignment, and then I, I gave it perfect nutrition, and I rehabbed it with, with the knowledge of a chiropractor, and it's now almost perfect. I do look after it, I tend not to run on it, but I do, I cycle, I do a lot of cross training, and I'm looking after my knee for my favorite sport, which is downhill skiing. So that's what I do. So my knees are good enough to ski and that was after destroying them. 
So yes, knees can improve a lot, but you've got to get the basics right. You've got to get the nutrition, the balance, you've got to get the strength, um, and it's just getting them back into balance and function. I hope that helps. Okay, thank you again, Dr. Tim, for answering the questions. I hope the Dr. B uh, comes to a close for this health and evidence, uh, health and wellness TV. I would like to uh, post a poll for you guys to see. Um, sorry, uh, maybe just one last question. Uh, one last question that came in: Do we have to attend clinic regularly? So, yeah. Do we have to attend the clinic regularly? Okay. It depends what you want to achieve. So, so if some people use us for different things. Um, many, many of our clients, we have, they have been through a corrective protocol. So they might have been in a number of times over, uh, over a few months as we correct a problem. Um, now they choose to come in maybe twice a month because we are part of their strategy of maintenance, of wellness, not long term. Um, a lot of the healthiest people I know on this planet are chiropractors and they certainly employ a chiropractic lifestyle. Um, if you are using chiropractic just to get out of pain, then you know some people come in every now and again and they may come in four or five times and, and we get them out of pain by restoring function and then we don't see them again for six months or, or a year. But they tend to come back if, if we don't correct the problem. So it's really it's a strategy for life i i would never i've never ever ever once in my life told somebody you are done you don't need chiropractic anymore because chiropractic is used best to maintain alignment and wellness health long term so for me i'm using it very much as a strategy for longevity and of course i, I look after my nutrition and my exercise and I try and sleep well and I would and all the things that I call the foundational pillars these are the chiropractic solutions for health so alignment etc is all part of these solutions so um, you know you can use chiropractic as you want you know it's like do you have to go to the gym often well we all know that if you go to the gym twice a week it's probably better than once a week and if you go long term you're probably going to get better results um, it's, 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 you find how you want to, to use chiropractic. One thing is for sure, about 95% of the people that come in have enormous benefits. Of that, about 35%, I'd say the benefits are life changing because suddenly you're living without pain, suddenly you've got more, uh, a healthy immune system, etc. So it's if 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 it's one my the answer is I think it's really worth trying. I personally would not would not be able without it. Mm. Thanks okay. again, Dr. Tim. I mean, what else better time than now to actually pay a visit to a chiropractor with like the uh, exclusive promotion that uh, Total Health Chiropractic is offering. Absolutely. So yeah. So, I mean, before we end today's session, uh, I would like to throw a poll to see what you guys would like to see in the future health and web wellness series. So, so, yes. So, what would you, what do you wish to see in the next series? So, you guys can uh, help us get a rough idea of what, what you'd like to see. So, yeah. Again, uh, thank you all for attending this health and wellness series. Uh, don't forget to follow uh, Total Health Chiropractic on Instagram and Facebook at Total Health Cairo Asia. And also Bridge Plus at our Bridge Plus. And yes, hope to see you guys in the next health and wellness series. Thanks again, Dr. Tim, and for everyone who is attending today. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoyed it.